Welcome back. Today is October 4th and it is the middle of I was at the book festival weekend. Uh, this is the I think it's the fourth it's the fourth or fifth um, year that they've held the book festival. First two years were in the summer, the last couple of years have been in the fall. Um, in 2008, Iowa City was designated a UNESCO City of Literature. It was the third um, city to be so designated. It's obviously the home of the University of Iowa with the Associated Writers Workshop and the International Writing Program. Um, and so there's been a lot of kind of importation, exportation of writers from the area. And the, the festival is to celebrate that. Um, so this weekend started on Thursday. They had a couple of readings. Um, they did a, a reading from Underground, I think it's, I think it's Dostoevsky, um, uh, they at the Dublin Underground, ha ha ha, um, they did a reading of that out loud, um, Luis Alberto Urrea did, um, he had a discussion of immigration, um, issues, uh, and poverty at the Corval Center for the Performing Arts, um, and on Friday they had, um, a couple of competing events, um, it's kind of, it's gotten quite large, um, so you can't get to everything. Um, so on Friday night they had James Elroy with his new book Perfidia and a screening of LA Confidential at Film Scene. And at the same time they had a reading by Marilyn Robinson, um, and then a discussion and interview with Ayanna Mathis at the Englert, which is an old theater um, which kind of has been restored downtown. Um, and I went to the Marilyn Robinson signing. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you will know that I kind of went, you know, a little bit berserk. Um, and she read from her new book, Lila. Uh, Marilyn did. Um, and it was from a later section, which was really wasn't like a humongous spoiler, because if you've read Gilead, you know who Lila is. Um, but it was just absolutely beautiful. And then since Ayana was there, I had her sign my copy of The Twelve Tribes of Hattie as well. Um, and she's an unbelievably lovely person. Um, so that was just a really great evening. Um, it was it was cold and blustery and I had saved seats for both two of my bosses and their spouses. So um, it was a little crazy for a little bit, but it was really, really fun. And then today I started out at 10 o'clock. I went to film scene for a screening of the short films from the seven UNESCO cities of literature um, that they did as part of a Finnegan's Wake 75th anniversary. And that was really interesting to see how people um, interpreted um, the instructions from UNESCO, which were basically, here is the section of the book and go. Um, so Reykjavik, um, because uh, Finnegan's Wake has not been translated into Icelandic, unlike the other Joyce works. They just had a short introduction by a young lady from Iceland, and then they had an actor um, reading the book aloud in English. Um, the Melbourne and the Edinburgh contributions also had somebody just reading a section. Um, the Krakow section was really, really well done. It was acted out with some voiceover, very modernist um, filmmaking. That was really interesting. The contribution from the Dublin section was obviously they got to shoot in Dublin, so that was really nice. Um, and it was very, you know, it was very almost absurdist theatrical, um, almost as if the characters were puppets um, acting out um, the words as they went. They were not actually saying the dialogue or, or any of the words. Um, the Norwich contribution was really cool. It was Imar McBride, who her novel A Girl is a Half Form Thing won the Bailey Prize this year for women. Um, she recited a section, the, the section that Norwich was given, um, and wandered around. Um, so that was actually kind of cool. I did not know it was her until they got to the end and it flashed that the actress was Emma McBride. So that was really cool. Iowa City's contribution was, it was two actors from the Riverside Theater, and they basically did it a little, it was almost a little actor's workshop. They had script in hand, um, and they very did, um, Waiting for Godot, um, Beckett, you know, kind of, infused um, a reading of their section, which was really very cool. Um, so that was very enjoyable. Also, they had bottles of coffee at Film Scene for $5. So it was a good way to warm up because it was 39 degrees this morning. And even for Iowa, that is really cold for the first weekend in October. So after that, I uh, stopped by the Wedge, had my brunch, which I like to do when there's something going on downtown because they have a really great hash. That's really good. Um, and then I ran over to the library um, Iowa City Public Library 
for a session with Terrence Holt and Sean Strub. Um, Sean Strub is an AIDS activist and he was there with his memoir um, of, you know, uh, coming out and being diagnosed and recovery um, and how um, AIDS is so much more stigmatized now that there is a cure and you can live a normal lifespan and a fairly healthy life. Um, with treatment as opposed to when he was first diagnosed there was no treatment and people were going to die a really terrible death They had so much more support and acceptance from the community as opposed to now where it is almost criminalized and people are very much afraid to um, Admit to having been um, Diagnosed with HIV um, and then Terrence Holt's book his new book is about um, internship and his residency um, so they talked quite a bit about medical issues and it was really nice um, and then I ran over to the old Capitol building um, in the Senate chamber upstairs for the presentation of the 2014 Paul Engel Award. Paul Engel was not really the founder, but he, he really brought the international portion of the writer's workshop. Um, you know, he kind of created that and did, did the legwork to get that started and was the director of the workshop for many, 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 many years um, until his death in the 90s. Um, and so the prize honors him, and this year it was given to Luis Alberto Ruea, um, and I've heard interviews with him um, on occasion, um, so this one I really wanted to go to as you know, he talked about where he came from and his writing, and he, you know, he told this uh, a very moving story about his father, which I've heard before. I know he told it on his interview with Eleanor Wachtel um, on CBC Writers and Company, um, but he also talked, um, he uh, kind of fell in with kind of a Baptist Baptist missionary group a little bit and got to working with them and the people that he saw uh, and how that impacted his writing and how he processed it and why he writes the way he does and the subjects that he does write with. I um, had him sign a copy of The Devil's Highway uh, for me which is about um, these undocumented men who are trying to get into the United States um, along The Devil's Highway. Um, and it's, it's the, the deadliest portion, I guess, of the border. Um, and so I will be very honored to read this. Um, this was, it was a Pulitzer finalist, and I think, I believe a Kiriyama Rim finalist. I don't believe it actually won that, but um, this will be amazing. And I'm, I'm very honored to have listened to him speak. Um, and then the last thing I did today was a panel with the Irish poets who are in town, whose names are unfortunately totally escaping me right now. Um, but I will link to the book festival website um, and that will have the schedule from today But they talked about the Irish diaspora and Irish American and how even a poet like Wallace Stevens who Didn't go to Ireland or you know, anything he was considered an Irish American Poet simply because of the the way he wrote or the themes that he wrote upon um, And that was really interesting to listen to and then I had to go to work. Um, but there will be some stuff going on tomorrow. Jane Smiley is reading from her new book tomorrow at 1. There's a big celebration of Sir Walter Scott's Waverly that is going on. Um, for it's, I believe that's 175 years. And we have a town in Iowa called Waverly, Iowa that was apparently named for the Waverly novels. Um, and there's, um, uh, there's just a bunch of other stuff going on downtown tomorrow. Um, I don't know if I'll make a lot of things on Sunday. I'm really tired. I have to get some things done in the house. You know, groceries don't buy themselves and laundry doesn't wash itself. Because I also have to work again tomorrow afternoon. Um, but as usual, it was a really, you know, a fun time to go out and listen to people read their work and talk about why they write or who they write for or what inspires them. Uh, the only weird thing was, and this is, I mean, it's football season, it's the fall, um, and the university was on a bye week for football. Um, so not only were they not playing at home, they weren't playing at all, the football team. So I was really surprised at the very low number of university students. Um, I was commenting to my one boss, um, Eli, on Friday night at the Marilyn Robinson reading that... <laughs> It was a little weird when I first got because I got there really early because I didn't know how crazy it would be because the Margaret Atwood reading last year, which um, was in the same Englert Theater, um, it was packed. 
um, and I got there early to stand in line, um, and it was it was crazy. Um, so this I didn't know. I mean, it's Marilyn Robinson. She's local. She has a Pulitzer. She has an Orange Prize. She won all this stuff. Lila has been long listed already for the National Book Award, and you cannot otherwise buy it until Tuesday in Prairie Lights, which is the local independent bookstore. Got special permission to sell Lila at the reading. Um, I didn't know how the crowd would be, so I got there really early, um, and so I was saving two seats for, you know, Eli and his wife, and then my other boss, Lorraine, and her husband. Um, and so I'm in, I'm, I'm in the auditorium, and I'm, you know, I've got all my stuff out, and I'm waiting for them, and it was a little weird, because I was the youngest person in the auditorium, maybe by 30 years. There's a lot of people, um, my parents' age and older. Some, I think they were all up in the auditorium, um, in the balcony, because in the signing line later, um, there were more people of college age. The, the workshop, uh, uh, graduate students, um, they were all, um, they all had safe seats down front. So it was a little bit less weird making. I had some people closer to my age. Um, but also the next day at the Terrence Holt, Sean Straub reading, um, a lot of retiree age. And I thought it was really weird that the medical students and the College of Public Health students, um, since those were topics that would have been very close to, um, things that they, they study or they would be working with were not there. And I know it was advertised, um, the festival um and then when i went to the the poets later um there was only like, there were two girls behind me who were of you know kind of undergrad slash grad school age otherwise it was a lot of um professors who are 15 20 years older than i am or older people who are of retirement age and it just it was very weird um and i know that they they moved the festival to the fall so that s there could be more uh, advantage taken of um, a festival by the students. Um, so it was a little different. Um, that was a little weird that that I was I was the young person in the room. Um, I'm only just starting to get used to being an older person in a room because um, I was always the youngest in my age group. Um, but uh, but it didn't it didn't detract from the weekend. The festival is a lot of fun, and next year it will be just as good or better, and we'll have even more things, making it even harder for me to decide what to see. So um, it'll probably be in early October. So if you've ever wanted to come visit Iowa City, we have really pretty fall color when it's not 39 degrees in the morning um, out by the reservoir, and you can come and visit and I will show you all the good places to eat and we can talk about books and um, it'll be really fun. So next year, October, mark your calendars, Iowa City Book Festival and I will see you later. Bye. Tolstoy, Dostoevsky, Tolstoy, I'm about to biff this so hard. And like she signed when I was a child, I read books, um, which uh, is not entirely about Marilyn Robinson reading books as a child because I did not read the jacket copy before I bought it and read it and it actually has quite a few essays um, about spirituality and her her Calvinist uh, oriented spirituality specifically the, the, the workshop kids all had kids I mean if I'd been really irresponsible I could have had a kid in grad school by now or something maybe I don't know I'm 36 well maybe maybe not in grad school I would have had a college freshman maybe um, had I been really irresponsible in high school. I could stand within four feet of Marilyn Robbins. It was amazing. <sighs> it was so cool.